what's up? This video, a little bit different, mostly because, first of all, uh, it's my second time filming it. Secondly, actually probably more importantly, is the fact that I'm filming it on my phone. Quick story time, and then we're gonna get into the haul, swear. But I took my vlogging camera, the camera that I basically use all the time for filming, with the memory card that I use all the time for filming to Coachella because I wanted to do a whole Coachella vlog and unfortunately it got stolen on the third day and I hadn't been importing any of my footage so there's quite a few videos that I lost one of them being this one which is a haul of just like the books that I've gotten recently it had a couple of, it had a lot of unboxings in it actually because I'd been unboxing all of the books I unboxed an owl crate and a fairy loot that footage is officially gone ideally they just erased all the footage in that camera like it's bad enough to steal someone's camera don't look through their footage you know what I mean so yeah we're here <laughs> we're filming on a phone I think it might go well I think it's gonna go fine but if the quality is different that's definitely why and yeah I hope that this is still good even though like the energy is gonna be a little bit different because obviously this isn't my first time doing it I do have one new unboxing though that wasn't in the previous one which I'm really really excited about so yeah stay tuned let's look at all the books I've mostly been buying romance romance books that I've already read specifically just because I don't like adding to my TBR so if I've already read it and then I buy the book it feels like a cheat code you know what I mean but I'm excited so let's just let's just get into it let me make sure I'm in the frame though because you know I don't have a view thingy I think that was fine we have to start somewhere so let's start first with the owl crate and the fairy loot books just because I actually don't have the boxes anymore so it's not really an unboxing but I still wanted to show it just because I am a rep for owl crate and fairy loot or actually I'm not I don't believe receiving any more owl crate boxes after this one not for any particular reason i still love owl crate but um i just i've been a rep for such a long time and i'd like to give other people the opportunity you know so let's just go through that one really quick this is the march box so the first thing do i have the spoiler card i thought i did that's how i found all these things where did i put it though where did i put everything oh here so this is the spoiler card and it's let's rewrite history march 2023 so this was a really cute box, actually. The first thing in here is an Infernal Devices bookshop souvenir glass tumbler created with love by Tess Medovich at Paperback Bones. It's so pretty. It says like Carster and Herondale book merchants established 1878. And then the back has like a Latin thing for shadow hunter things. And it comes with a glass straw. This is really, really cute. I cannot wait to use this. I obviously haven't opened it up yet. See, it kind of works out that I... <laughs> that I'm so slow at putting things away because then I still had everything out <laughs> to be able to film this video. So the th second thing that was in there was were, were librarian socks, which are these cute little ankle socks that have like the like stamp card design that like you would write in if you rented out a book way back in the day. And by way back in the day, I mean, I am actually not sure if I ever did it, but I do remember learning how to do it, like in elementary school. So I guess not that far back in the day, or maybe I'm old, who knows. The next thing in here was a book sleeve created by Letters by Lila, and it features a quote from Wicked and Deathless. And the quote says, that's how you get Deathless, wait, Volchitsa? That's how you get Deathless, Volchitsa. Walk the same tale over and over until you wear a groove in the world. And the back says, a good book was its own brand of magic. Stories made everything possible. Which is from Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. So it has two quotes. And next up, oh, this was really cool actually. I still don't know how it works, but it's an eternal pencil and it was inspired by Babel by RF Kong, which I still haven't read, but I'm still very excited about. It has like a little lead nub, and I guess this is theoretically an eternal pencil. It just like never runs out of lead. I, I don't know. This seems really cool. I don't know how it works. If any of you are smarter than me and would like to tell me, please let me know down below. Um, and it just says, we're here to make magic with words on the side. And then there is the treasures and tomes or treasured tomes enamel pin. And I'm actually really bummed that I won't be getting any more of these. I'm not going to lie. But this one is from Once Upon a Broken Heart and Recall the Ballad of Archer and the Fox. Oh, to recall the Ballad of the Archer and the Fox. So it goes like this and then you open it up and it looks like that. It says, in case you forget what the Prince of Hearts has done and you're tempted to trust him again. Suspicious. Still haven't read that either, but I've heard amazing things about it. So one of these days. And 
then the book of the month, which was Midnight Strikes by Ziba Shnaz. This is really cool. They ended up like foregoing the whole dust jacket thing and this is just printed directly on the hardcover. It's one of those like soft matte feel books. It's beautiful. It's an absolutely stunning book. And the back says our fates are sealed whether we know it or not. And it has gilded edges. It's really, really something. I mean, look at these end papers. It has the signature from the author right here. And then the letter from the author's in there as well. I still really like that they've been putting it inside. And yeah, let me just read you the summary. It's a time loop fantasy. Oh, hi, Paulo. We follow 17 year old Anais who experiences the same night over and over trying to make it past midnight and live to see the next day. At the same time, Anais starts to unravel the dark and deadly deceptions of the court and kingdom. This might be my last Owlcrate box and unfortunately it's not one that I can re-unbox for you because I did break down the box and all that and that video is gone. I swear I'm not as bitter as I might sound right now but I feel like I looked really cute that day. I feel like I look really cute today too though so it's fine. Um, so the next thing that I actually did keep the box of but I have like things in it so fairy loot, March box. This is the adult box. I'm also a rep for them. I'll leave all the rep information down below just in case you do want to check them out either of the brands. Uh, so this one is their March box and it's Rotten Opulence and the book of the month ended up being The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten and this is so stunning. I mean look at these end papers like they made it just like merge with the dust jacket. It's so pretty and then or end papers. Did I call them end papers? I meant sprayed edges but they do have really cool end papers as well. Ta-da! And let's look at it naked. Like this is so beautiful. Fairy Lou's just been going off with their additions lately. And it's the reverse of the dust jacket, which is really cool. I like when they have another dust jacket underneath the dust jacket so you can kind of choose which one you like most. I do think that I prefer this version, but I'm still not even sure if I want to keep the dust jacket on. Like this book is so pretty without it, but yeah, we'll decide. We'll decide eventually. Let me just read you the summary real quick and then we'll get into the rest of the books. When Laura was 13, she escaped a cult in the catacombs beneath the city of Dallaire, and in 10 years since, she's lived by one rule, don't let them find you. Easier said than done, when her magic ties her to the city, Mordom is a magic born from death and it's high-priced an illicit commodity in Dallaire. Laura has made a living running prisons no, running poisons for the city's underbelly, but when a run goes wrong, she's captured by the king and is and expects to be sent to the pyre, but the king has different plans. Laura is thrust into the sainted king's glittering court where no one can be believed and even fewer can be trusted. Guarded by Gabriel, a duke turned monk, and continually running up against Bastian, the king's ne'er-do-well heir, Laura tingles in politics, religion, and forbidden romance as she attempts to navigate a debauched and opulent society, but the life she left behind in the catacombs is catching up with her, and even as Laura makes her way through the sainted court above, danger from below draws ever closer. So yeah, those are those. Um, let's get into the actual books hauled. What do you want to do? Start with romance? I think we'll start with romance. Let's just show you everything. I got the whole series for the Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas. I did not expect these to be as large as they are. Like Kill Switch and Nightfall are massive. These are big boys. Uh, I've read all of these books. This is a really fun series. It is a bully romance. So yeah, the basis of this is like, oh, uh, what's her name? Rika. So Rika, she... Luna, are you playing with styrofoam? Can you please not? Why were you chewing on it? That's like not chewing things. Okay, anyways. So, <laughs> back to the Devil's Night series. Okay, basically in this town, there's these four guys. They're really rich, they're really handsome, they're really popular, they're on the basketball team, they're just like hot, and they're kind of dangerous. And they're seniors when Rika is a freshman, and every single year they always have a Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween, and it's a night where they kind of like pull pranks on the town, but because they're rich, popular, can get away with anything, they pull like very extreme pranks, like I don't know, setting fires, breaking into things, like extreme, you know? They're bad boys. Uh, and Rika has always been like low-key in love with like the main dude, which is Michael. Michael's like the head of the crew, but they're all, they're all cool. They're all powerful. But Michael's like kind of the leader and she's always had a crush on him and like they've been family friends since forever, but like he never noticed her because she's a just a freshman. And one year, their senior year and her freshman, they actually take her out on Devil's Night. Is it freshman year or sophomore year? I'm pretty sure it's freshman. I could be wrong though. But either way, um, it's freshman year. They take her out, something goes down, and then three of the guys 
end up in prison. Not Michael though. Michael, because this flashes forward to three years later, is actually on a pro basketball team now. And Rika is about to start college and it just so happens that she's going to college in the same city that Michael is in a pro basketball team on and he hates her. They blame Rika for whatever went down that night and everyone is getting out of jail this year and they're gonna get their payback. They're gonna get revenge on whatever happened that was Rika's fault. So yeah, <laughs> um, I, I, this is bully, this is a bully romance. A lot of the times I was like sitting there thinking that it felt a little illegal, so it's a little bit dark. Uh, just, just as a warning, but I read this last year. I really did like it. I like Penelope Douglas's writing in general. So I decided to just splurge and buy myself the series, especially because these covers and like these books are so pretty. That's not the order they go in. Give me one moment. I think the spines make up. Oh no, they don't. Maybe I'm just making that up. I'm making that up. I thought the spines did something. They just look similar. But yeah, so those four heavy books. And then I got more Penelope Douglas books, which these I recently read. There are bully romances as well, but they came out before the Devil's Night series, so you can kind of see a difference in how Penelope Douglas writes, which is kind of fun. Um, but I got Bully and Rival by Penelope Douglas. These are such like classic romance looking covers, but like very edgy. <laughs> But these are fun. It I've realized that in her series, at least in these two series, she does the same thing because each book follows a different person from the friend group and their different relationship. So I should have said, but ah, you don't care. But this one, same same deal. Uh, the first one being Bully, and basically, is it? He has such a basic boy name, Jared. I think. Yeah, Jared. Okay, so this one. Tate and Jared used to be best friends, like best best friends. They were like neighbors and just were childhood best friends. They did everything together. And then one summer, Jared went away to go visit his dad. And when he came back, he was just like, he cut off Tate. He was different. He was a different bad boy, still a bad boy. And then he started bullying Tate, like right before they went into high school. And she's just been bullied by all of her high school mates this entire time until she decides like she wants to do a study abroad program for her junior year in France. And she comes back like rejuvenated for senior year and she's ready to like not take anyone's shit anymore and she wants to just stand up to Jared and find out what the heck went wrong for him to just cancel out their friendship and just be so mean to her for the last few years and there's like street racing because this one's all about like cars like Jared's really into cars and he always throws parties in the next door house and she's always having to go over to break up the party and I don't know it's just <laughs> It's very cliche, but it's very fun bully romance as well. And this one follows another person in Jared's friend group and his girly. Uh, so yeah, I got the first two books because these are the only ones that I've read. One more romance. Well, no, there's a couple more romances, but The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. And this is another one that I recently read. All I can say about this one is that it's basically like, like 99 cent store version of Disney World. That's like the whole idea here. It's Dreamland and this billionaire hot guy has to take over as director of Dreamland when his grandfather passes away, the grandfather that created Dreamland. And he's really like not into it, but he has to do it for the will. Like he has to do it to get his cut of the company. So he goes into it very negative. This is a grumpy sunshine 1000%. I'm not the biggest fan of sunshine characters. So this was okay for me, but if you love Grumpy Sunshine, you're gonna like this a lot because Zara is just like a very sunshine character. She's an optimist, sees the bright side in everything, may not have the best life, but just is so gung-ho about it. And like, she loves working in Dreamland. It's like a dream can come true for her. She ends up being like their version of an Imagineer. I don't remember what they called it. It was something so like a create a creator or gosh I don't know it was it was their version of a Disney Imagineer basically and she has to like help save Dreamland with Rowan so yeah I'm more excited about the next book I've heard really good things about terms and conditions but the fine print was still it was still fun and I really like the covers that's actually why I bought it because these are just really stunning editions and then please do not yell at me I bought a Colleen Hoover book I have a Colleen Hoover video coming well <laughs> Actually, the footage for it was in my camera, so we have to refilm a few things for that Colleen Hoover video, but don't worry, it's still gonna come. I just have to like rework some things. I'm sorry if uh, videos will be a little bit slower to come in the next month or so. I just have to still buy a camera and like figure out what I'm doing and refilm a lot of things, so it'll come. 
don't worry. Either way, I bought All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This one, I don't even know if I want to tell you like the, I'm not going to tell you the whole deal with it because there is going to be a Colleen Hoover book video, but I, I guess I'll give you a little bit of the details. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll read you the quip. So it says, can a love story with a perfect beginning survive a lifetime between two imperfect people? Because basically it has to do with the now, which is a seven year long marriage and they've, they've fallen out of step with each other and it flashes back to the then and when they first met and how in love they were and if they can find that love again now. So yeah, I've realized Colleen Hoover really likes flashbacks. Like that is just like the entire way that she builds chemistry between characters. I still have to read more. I am still not Colleen Hoover's biggest fan. The main reason I bought the books is actually because I want to be able to annotate it and like appropriately put down my thoughts. I just don't, I don't like catch on to things easy without that. So anyways, those are all the romance things. I did a cute little unboxing. I got like a Taylor Swift merch thing because I couldn't get the black hoodie when I was at the Eras tour. The Eras tour, which I was gonna have a vlog for, but unfortunately I sound like a broken record. It was on the camera. Uh, so anyways, in that box though, I also got the All Too Well book by Taylor Swift. It's just a notebook. I'm really excited about this though. I've wanted this since I noticed that this was like a thing. Uh, when I saw the All Too Well music video, like when it first came out that first day and this was in it, I immediately went to her merch site and went to go see if she had a book and she did and it was a notebook and I wanted to buy it instantly to be like my new poetry book. But since I hadn't filled out the rest of my poetry journal at the time, I was like, Brittany, wait. Uh, and now that has been finished and I no longer want to wait because I'm scared that eventually this won't be sold anymore. So I bought it and I'm glad I did. It's kind of like a, a, sh a shitty kind of like paper dust jacket, but it's fine. <laughs> I just won't get water on it. I got water on it already. I'm not gonna lie. That's why it's wrinkled. But anyways, um, so on to the next thing. Oh, this is exciting. So these are non, non romance things. I do have a couple books from unboxings that I did in my lip filler video. If you saw that oh, lip filler video, it's like a, it's the video where I talk about how I did get lip filler, but it's not called that, I think. <laughs> I'll link it up above if you want to see that. But in that, I unboxed Rebel by Lisa Mia Smith. This was the Owl Crate for February. And then I also unboxed the Fairy Loot for February, which was The Adventures of Mina Al Surafi by Shannon Shakabordi. This is a stunning edition. Like, I cannot get over how beautiful this book is. Each of the end papers are maps, and the back one has a cat. Uh, you knew I'd like that. You knew I would. And then this book without the dust jacket on is even more beautiful. Like I'm still really conflicted on what to do about the dust jacket because you get it. I know, I knew you would. Um, and then the, uh, the sprayed edges, like, come on. This is just, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. We have A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. I saw this in Target before I was leaving for Coachella and I am weak and I bought it. I need to do a reread of Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm not gonna lie, I just don't remember it well enough. I listened to it on audio and I think that I was just rushing through the audiobook instead of like actually taking my time and listening listening to it. So I need to read it again before I jump into this. My initial like idea with Priory is that I just noticed that it was a good piece of work, but I wasn't that in love with it. And I don't know, we'll see. I have to do a reread and then we'll do this. This is the prequel, I believe, to Priory of the Orange Tree, so. I guess technically I could read this first, but that just doesn't sound fun. I don't remember enough. So the other book, this is, ugh, I'm so excited to talk about this. Okay, so <laughs> I have a friend at work who recently uh, quit. <laughs> But for exciting things, but we always talked about books at work and he wanted to buy everyone that he talked books with at work or give them a copy of one of his own books. And he even asked me, he was like, I'm scared to get you a book that you already have. And he mentioned that like he likes to read audio autobiographies and I don't tend to read auto autobiographies because I haven't really found the ones that I would like. You know, I wanna make sure I'm still filming. I'm kind of nervous. But he was like, I think I have something for you. And he did. Like, this is the perfect autobiography for me. And that is Tom Felton's Beyond the Wand, The Magic and Mayhem of Growing Up a Wizard. And it's a signed edition. Like, it's just so sweet. Like, shout out to you, Tyler. Like, this is one of the sweetest things that I've been given, but it's such a cool autobiography for me. I just love that Tom Felton's always been like very, 
into his role as Draco Malfoy because I feel like a lot of child actors for good reason don't end up liking the thing that got them famous. They don't like to be attached to it. And I feel like Tom Felton's always just loved it. Like he appears on TikTok all the time, like doing random Draco Malfoy things. And I just love that about him. And I would love to see his experience of just like getting the part and how it was. So I'm really excited to read this. Shout out to you, Tyler. This was a great, great choice. Last thing, I actually got this in the mail just a couple of days ago. I have followed this person on Instagram for a while sir they make their own sprayed edges like they they spray and stencil edges <laughs> i'm not describing this well but it's kathy's bookshop on instagram i will definitely be linking it down below but i've admired her stenciled edges for quite a while and my friend mika is actually the one that showed them to me i believe and i just have been obsessed and i was going through my instagram dms which i don't do as often as i should honestly and i'd seen that she'd reached out to me just being like hey if you ever wanted to get books like let me know and i was shocked like in general like that was just such a sweet offer so I messaged back like two months later being like, I'm so sorry I never saw this. I'm obsessed with your work. Like, obviously I understand if you don't have any more quota or anything, but like, I just wanted to let you know, like, thank you for the offer. And she was like, yes, we can still do it if you want to. Um, And she let me pick out two books, which is just so sweet. And I'm so excited to unbox these for you. So, da -da -da -da. oh wait, maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm doing it the wrong way. <laughs> we have a cute little tape. Ooh. She wrapped these so nicely. It's all wrapped up in like a little parchment paper and it has her sticker on it. Oops. Look at this. Wait, what's this? <gasps> Let's open this first because I already know what the books are gonna be, but I'm not sure what this is. I think that she mentioned that she wanted to send me some of her jewelry pieces because she also does jewelry and stuff on there as well. And I'm not gonna say no, you know what I mean? But let's see. Okay, so it has, once again, like the, the little sticker and the paper. You sent me too much. If you are watching this video right now, you sent me way too much. This is so sweet. Um, So there's a bookmark in here, which I adore. This is so my style. You guys know I'm all about the night sky and the moon and stars. And like it has the phase of the moon and then the back has just a night sky. This is so beautiful. I love it. And then... <sighs> We have three different pairs of earrings. I'll show you those in a moment because we also have these really cool wax seals. So she sells these and like you can basically just stick them on things. Like they, she puts a little sticker on the back of them. I remember talking to her about these now actually. And oh, and a cute little sticker with just like the, the book design that she has. And these are so cool. I love wax stamps and I like that I don't have to make these. Like I like that, oh, there's a cat. And one fell. Oh, it's a wolf! <gasps> With like a. Oh, this is so cool. This is really cool. And they feel like really sturdy, actually. I was worried that like wax stamps might feel breakable. Like this one's really thin and it's still just holding up perfectly. This is so cool. <gasps> I don't even know what I want to put it on, but I want to put it on something cool. Ooh, I feel like like a little dragon right now with like a horde of new jewels. I'm like, ooh, this is so pretty. This is really cool. They're like stickers, but with texture. I'm obsessed. So let's look at the earrings really quick. So there's first this one. Wait, there's, are there two in each? Shut, you gave me way too much, honestly. So we have like the bat wings, like the Illyrian bat wings. I'm obsessed with these. I cannot wait to put them in. And then we have these ones, which have like the death mask kind of. She wrote it on the back. So it's six of crows inspired. So it's a crow mask or like crow bone skull, crow skull. There we go. We were gonna get there eventually. But wait, there's more. I feel like an infomercial, but like a fun one. Duh. So, ooh, cool. These are like little daggers, which you guys know I love my dagger earrings and these are more subtle. My dagger earrings are really large and in charge and I have actually wanted to get smaller ones for a while. So this is so cool. And there's another set. Oh, I love these. Oh my gosh, wait. And, oh, I love these. They're little like crescent moons and she gave me the silver and the gold. This is so, this is so much. This is too much. This is so nice. Thank you. Ah, uh, and like I said, I'm linking everything down below in case you guys want to check them out. Um, she does like bookish inspired jewelry. So all of these um, have either like themes from books or like actually are inspired by the books, which 
I think it was really cool. Um, and we have the actual books, which are in their own separate little bubble wrap. I'm obsessed with the way that all of this is wrapped. So there is yet another little stamp with these like cool little stickers with it. And then the actual book has like a, a cute writing parchment wrapped around it with like what, an actual stamp on it as well. Wax stamp. And then this is her, oh, this is great. So this is the actual website and all that good stuff. It's like a business card, but a business bookmark. That's very clever. Just so here you go. Screenshot it if you want to check her out. And it's really cute because it has all the like sprayed, like all these stenciled edges on the other side. Love it. And oh, cute. And then the actual business card. So the thank you for ordering. A little teaser spoiler card. It's for Song of Achilles. And then let me just unwrap this. Gosh, I don't want anything to rip. So... I've wanted these editions in general of Circe and Song of Achilles for a long time. <gasps> this isn't even the exciting part. I, oh, the spray touches. This is so beautiful. <gasps> so we have like the books themselves and then we have these edges. Like, look at that. These are so beautiful. I love, I love how they both match like the covers the gold leafing on them. This is so pretty. I don't even know how she does this. This is incredible. This is just, look how perfect. Like there's no sticking. They look beautiful. Ugh, there's no like residue or anything. Cause the fairy light ones with the sparkly ones, they kind of leave a little bit of a sparkly residue on me. These ones don't have any. It's really impressive. This is so cool. Like, I'm honored. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, please check her out. Like, honestly, there's so many books that she sells on her site and uh, she does it by hand, like by herself. It's so impressive what she's doing. And I'm very happy to have a couple of copies of her books so thank you so much Kathy and I hope you guys check her out she deserves all of the, your love and support so ah, I'm so excited okay so yeah that's that's all the unboxings um I am now done I'm hoping this video turned out okay and yeah things happen guys right um but it's fine so we are done and thank you so much for watching I feel like I talked a lot and I'm I'm done <laughs> like I said but stay tuned for other videos probably on my phone <laughs> bye